Hello, good morning, welcome, good morning, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Hellsworth. It's six o'clock on the evening of Tuesday the 14th of November. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer, Evening Prayer All Saints to Advent, and you'll find that in the book, Common Worship Daily Prayer, in the Morning and Evening Prayer during the season section, Evening Prayer All Saints to Advent. We're also commemorating Samuel Seabury, so if you are looking to follow in the book, 14th of November, halfway through amongst the saints' days and festivals. If there are any adjustments to be made, they will be noted there. <clears throat> You'll also find the words at the Church of England's website, Arima's Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, for Divine Office. And uh, you may join same times by Zoom. Uh, you can join me in the building uh, by Zoom. Codes are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and the audio will appear as if by magic on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. I also have some videos on TikTok if you're interested in having a look at that too. You'd be very welcome. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. Now as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions. Cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom, where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Isaac Watts hymn. Give me the wings of faith to rise within the veil and see the saints above. How great their joys, how bright their glories be. Once they were mourning here below and wet their couch with tears. They wrestled hard as we do now with sins and doubts and fears. I asked them whence their victory came. They with united breath ascribed their conquest to the Lamb, their triumph to his death. They marked the footsteps that he trod, his zeal inspired their breast, and following their incarnate God possessed the promised rest. <clears throat> our glorious leader claims our praise for his own pattern given, while the long cloud of witnesses show the same path to heaven. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. If you are following in a book, you'll find the Psalms at the back. The appointed psalmody this evening, numbers 36 and 40. Psalms 36 and 40. With you, O God, is the well of life. Sin whispers to the wicked in the depths of their heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They flatter themselves in their own eyes that their abominable sin will not be found out. The words of their mouth are unrighteous and full of deceit. They have ceased to act wisely and to do good. They think out mischief upon their beds and have set themselves in no good way, nor do they abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God! All mortal flesh shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the abundance of you, with the abundance of your house. They shall drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in, in your light shall we see light. O continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. <clears throat> Let not the foot of pride come against me, nor the hand of the ungodly thrust me away. There are they fallen all who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to stand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. With you, O God, is the well of life. A 
Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord, my God. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me out of the roaring pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a rock and made my footing sure. He has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not turn to the proud that follow a lie. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. How great your designs for us. There is none that can be compared with you. If I were to proclaim them and, proclaim them and tell of them, <clears throat> they would be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sacrifice for sin you have not required. Then said I, lo, I come. <clears throat> In the scroll of the book it is written of me that I should do your will, O my God. I delight to do it. Your law is within my heart. I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness I have not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and truth from the great congregation. Do not withhold your compassion from me, O Lord. Let your love and your faithfulness always preserve me. For innumerable troubles have come about me. My sins have overtaken me so that I cannot look up. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them be driven back and put to shame who wish me evil. <clears throat> Let those who heap insults upon me be desolate because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation say always, the Lord is great. Though I am poor and needy, the Lord cares for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. O, God, o my God, make no delay. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. Scrolling past our first reading to the Canticle, the Song of God's Assembled. Turning back in our books to Evening Prayer, All Saints to Advent. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels making festival, before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We have come before God, who is judge of all, before the spirits of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, so let us give thanks and offer to God acceptable worship, full of reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. This from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. A reading from the Concordat, established between the Scottish bishops and Dr Samuel Seabury, Presbyter, in Connecticut, 15th of November, 1784. The wise and gracious providence of mercy for God, having put into the hearts of the Christians the Episcopal persuasion in Connecticut in North America, to desire that the blessings of a free, valid, and purely ecclesiastical episcopacy might be communicated to them, and a church regularly formed in that part of the Western world upon the most ancient and primitive model. An application having been made for this purpose by the Reverend Dr. Samuel Seabee, Presbyter in Connecticut, to the right Reverend Bishop of the Church in Scotland, the said bishops, having taken this proposal into their serious consideration, most heartily concurred to promote and encourage the same, so far as lay in their power and accordingly began the powers and good work recommended to them by the complying by complying with the request of the clergy in Connecticut and advancing the said Dr. Samuel Seabury to the high order of the Episcopate, at the same time earnestly praying that this work of the Lord thus happily begun might prosper in his hands, till it should please the great and glorious head of the church to increase the number of bishops in America and to send forth more labourers into that part of his harvest. Animated with this pious hope and earnest desires to establish a bond of peace and holy communion between the two churches, the bishops of the church in Scotland, whose names are underwritten, having had full and free conference with the Bishop Seabury after his consecration and advancement as foresaid, agreed with him on the following articles, which are to serve as a concordat or bond of union between the Catholic remainder of the ancient Church of Scotland and the now rising Church in the state of Connecticut. They agree in, thankfully receiving and humbly and heartily embracing the whole doctrine of the Gospel as revealed and set forth in the Holy Scriptures. They agree in believing this Church to be the mystical body of Christ, of which he alone is the head and supreme governor, and that under him the chief ministers or managers of the affairs of this spiritual society are those called bishops, whose exercise of their sacred office being independent of all lay powers, it follows of consequence that their spiritual authority and jurisdiction cannot be affected by any lay deprivation. 
They agree in desiring that there may be as near a conformity in worship and discipline established between the two churches as is consistent with the different circumstances and customs of nations. As the celebration of the Holy Eucharist or administration of the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ is the principal bond of union among Christians as well as the most solemn act of worship in the Christian church, the bishops all foresaid agree in desiring that there be as little variance here as possible. And though the Scottish bishops are very far from prescribing to their brethren in this matter, they cannot help ardently wishing that Bishop Seabury would endeavour all he can, consistently with peace and prudence, to make the celebration of this venerable mystery conformable to the most primitive doctrine and practice in that respect, <clears throat> which is the pattern the Episcopal Church of Scotland has copied after in her communion office, and which it has been the wish of some of the most eminent divines of the Church of England that she also had more closely followed than she seems to have done since she gave up her first reformed liturgy using the reign of King Edward VI, between which and the form of the Episcopal Church of Scotland there is no difference in any point which the primitive church reckoned essential to the right ministration of the Holy Saint Eucharist. The bishops before said do hereby jointly declare in the most solemn manner that in the whole of this transaction they have nothing else in view but the glory of God and the good of his church. <coughs> so to Daniel 5, 1 to 12, our first Bible reading, other than what we've done already liturgically uh, from the Psalms. Daniel is about <coughs> excuse me, five books into the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures, so if you turn to halfway through, that's the wisdom stuff, Psalms and Proverbs and the like. Move towards the back, and you should come across Isaiah and Jeremiah, and a couple of three books further, and you'll find Daniel. In the book of Daniel, do use an index so it doesn't fall open to you. Sometimes the pages of the Bible are extra thin. You can sort of turn over two menus trying to flick through, looking for the book of Daniel. And within the book of Daniel, we're looking for the chapter number five, so that's the large number at the margin, the head of the paragraph, chapter number five. And within chapter 5, we are starting verse 1 and going on to 12. So the verse numbers are the small numbers in the text. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. Uh, you can scroll back to it from the canticle we just read if you are following electronically. Daniel 5, 1 to 12. King Belshazzar made a great festival for a thousand of his lords. He was drinking wine in the presence of the thousand. Under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar commanded that they bring them in the vessels of gold and silver that his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, so that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines, might drink from them. So they brought in the vessels of gold and silver that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines, drank from them. They drank the wine and prayed to the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood and stone. Immediately the fingers of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the wall of the royal palace next to the lampstand. The king was watching the hand as it wrote, then the king's face turned pale and his thoughts terrified him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. The king cried aloud to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans and the diviners, and the king said to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever can read this writing and tell me its interpretation shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around his neck and rank third in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or to tell the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar became greatly terrified and his face turned pale and his lords were perplexed. The queen, when she heard the discussion of the king and his lords, came to the banqueting hall. The queen said, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts terrify you. Your face grow pale. There is a man in your kingdom who is endowed with the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, he was found to have enlightenment, understanding, and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and diviners because of an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, solve problems, found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. <coughs> So I'm afraid it's a bit of a cliffhanger. You have to join us. In fact, I'm not here tomorrow, so uh, you might have to do evening prayer yourself and look up the lectionary to read what happens next, because uh, we'll have probably missed the next episode when we come back on Thursday. But um, <coughs> we should be shocked that the um, holy vessels, the stuff that was used to worship God, is just being used um, for an ordinary drinking part. I mean, it's a significant sort of festival. There was obviously a a thousand, that's a significant number. It's a great festival. But it's a mockery of uh, using these things that should have been being used um, in the temple to worship God. And they're being used to worship to, for their feasting and to worship these gods that are not gods. And so whilst we're sitting there thinking as devout Hebrews hearing us, oh my goodness, a hand appears and writes something on the wall and uh, the king's terrified he calls his people that might be able to work out and understand and read and explain what it means, but he can't. Then a queen turns up and says, actually, what you need to do is find Daniel and he'll do it for you. May God enable us as uh, God-fearers and righteous that those in authority in and around us will know to come to us for advice 
and guidance when they face challenges in their kingdoms, in their areas of responsibility. Uh, it might not be a result of doing something deliberately provocative, but it seems to me starting a war on a Sabbath might be one such occasion, or if not a war, because perhaps what's going on in the Middle East at the moment shouldn't really be described that I'm talking of uh, Israel and Palestine, but <clears throat> that violent reaction to what seems to have been an orchestrated and permitted act of terror as a pretext for this um, bombing and obliteration of the peoples so that potentially a new uh, canal might be dug through from the Mediterranean, whatever the purpose or reason behind you know, it seems to me there's, there are provocative acts and there are things that shock that might cause, if you like, the writing to appear on the wall. And uh, those of faith, those of spirituality, those of honesty and integrity, decent human beings should be there and around to interpret the signs of the times to those that cannot see it. <coughs> to our second reading, Revelation 6. Scroll on to it if you're following uh, online. In a Holy Bible, Revelation, easy to find right at the back of the book. It's uh, paired with Daniel because they're both apocalyptic, sort of hidden dream world genres. But right at the back, you'll find Revelation. And uh, we're looking for chapter six this time, large number at the head of the paragraph, chapter six in the book of Revelation. Then I saw the Lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures call out, as with a voice of thunder, come. I looked, and there was a white horse. Its rider had a bow, a crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature call out, come, and out came another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth, so that people were slaughtered one another, and he was given a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature call out, come. I looked, and there was a black horse. Its rider held a pair of scales in his hands, and I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures, saying, A quart of wheat for a day's pay, and three quarts of barley for a day's pay, but do not damage the olive oil and the wine. <coughs> when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out, come. I looked, and there was a pale green horse. Its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed with him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth, <coughs> to kill with sword, famine, and pestilence, and by the wild animals of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw the altar of the souls of those who had been slaughtered for the word of God and for the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long will it be before you judge and avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? They were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number would be complete both of their fellow servants and of the brothers and sisters who were soon to be killed as they themselves had been killed. <clears throat> when he opened the sixth seal, I looked and there came a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth, the full moon became like blood. The star of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree drops its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll rolling itself up and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth in magnets and the generals of the rich and the powerful and everyone stayed and free, hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling on the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the land. For the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to stand? <coughs> One can interpret this at all sorts of different levels and uh, go off on all sorts of, uh, follow all sorts of trains of thought based on horses and the numbers and the colours and etc. But in broad terms, we've got the world is in a sorry state. This was written 2,000 years ago, don't forget. But we've got war, we've got, uh, I guess that's war again, isn't it? So there's, a, there's a, a horse that's conquering and to conquer. We've got a slaughter, peace taken from the earth, so two, two riders, two horses dealing with conquering and slaughtering. Um, then we've got um, food scarcity and uh, oh, unjust scales and control of food and trade. And uh, another horse rider, death. This one has been given authority over a fourth of the earth. Um, apparently to use these powers the other horses have been given sword, famine, pestilence, <coughs> wild animals to cause death. So there are these kind of different avenues of destruction, pain and hurt <coughs> that people would have seen around them then and we would see around us now people dying of starvation, not because they can't produce their own food but because the Christian colonialist West has interfered with climate to such an extent they aren't able to grow their own food anymore, telling them not to use their own traditional techniques but to use Western techniques which don't work. Where they are, for example. 
selling them infertile seeds so they can't keep some back, selling them stuff they have to buy, fertiliser that they can't afford, they have to irrigate in ways that they cannot achieve, and so on and so forth. Trading agreements, once they have produced it, that are wildly against their favour, so that the uh, colonial forces, colonial powers, um, can rake in their profits at the expense of those who are trying to live and those, again, colonial powers, again, maintaining instability, they might continue to benefit from the petrochem uh, military hardware economy that uh, we are living with currently, which hopefully will fall and founder in the near future. Again, to the detriment of those who are being encouraged to uh, rebel and uh, stand up, uh, we might provide both sides, all sides, with equipment, and uh, protect our own interests and maintain our own stability at home. And uh, this gets to be so bad that um, we just have a quick glimpse at uh, those who've been killed for their faith. <clears throat> They've been asked, how long do we got to wait till you avenge our blood? And uh, they, it doesn't say who tells them, but somebody tells them that they've got to wait a little longer because they're more going to die. So this is written by and for persecuted Christians. Um, and so perhaps this is an encouragement to them that the world is falling apart, that there are those who are praying for an end to it, but that there will be more suffering and death for faith meanwhile. But then the sixth scroll and the world as we know it is wrapped up. Uh, is this figurative? Is this metaphorical? There are two views throughout the scriptures, the Christian scriptures, and I guess the, the Jewish too, can't immediately think off the top of my head. But yeah, possibly. I suppose it must go back to that for Christians think that, because Christianity is basically a Jewish faith. Uh, two schools of thought, repair and replace. And this particular writer here is obviously in the replace school. The heavens and the earth are rolled up. And uh, as this is happening, everybody from all ranks, all stations, all ethnicities, ask the rocks to cover them, they might hide the wrath of God. No one will escape this destruction, this anger. And so whilst we might be thinking uh, people are persecuting us, that people aren't getting our faith, people are harrying and torturing Christians to death around the world, surely, God, you need to sort it out. This day is coming. It should be an encouragement to us, perhaps, <clears throat> if that is our understanding of how God will resolve all things. There's going to be this big sort of wrapping up and everything cosmic. We folded up just as it appeared out of nowhere uh, when... Uh, God spoke the word and there was life and the Big Bang came around and suddenly there was something where there was nothing. So however you want to understand it, basically God is behind all that is going on in the world. The Jewish idea of God is that it wasn't God was good and the devil was bad, but that God is the source of all and holds and contains all. And uh, that in the end there will be a wrapping up and a resolution and we will be vindic well, God will be vindicated and in vindicating God's self, God will vindicate those that believe. We pray that, that time will come soon for those who are involved in the situation in the Middle East. So to the response you back in evening prayer, all saints to Advent, Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Mary, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the end of this day and we look back at those things that have been a blessing to us, where we have known your presence, where we have felt alive and inspired energised, whether we've rested or been creative, whether we've been in the company of others or on our own, whether we've been at work or at home, whatever it is that we've done that has or experienced that has made us feel alive, 
good. We thank you for that and we pray that it would be an inspiration and a spur us on for tomorrow. And where our situations have been more negative, where we've been with pain, where we've had bad news, uh, where we have uh, people have been unkind to us, where we've let ourselves down, where we've not been able to make progress with things we set out to do in the, at the beginning of the day, and uh, where we had news of debt, loss of job, loss of relationship, whatever it is that's brought us slow, living with pain or addiction, we come to you praying for your healing, your provision, and uh, your protection. Release international prayers for India. Hindu nationalists appear to be trying to sow anti-Christian hatred among Maitai Hindus to help advance their cause in the region. We pray against any efforts to stir up discord and intolerance. Indeed, both there and in our own land, turning to Christian AIDS prayer diary, scrolling through to the 14th, we pray for just and equitable transitions to a renewable energy economy. And uh, the sooner that that happens, the better. That takes away from <coughs> this uh, petrochem war-based situation that we face at the moment, which is uh, no good to man or beast. Prayers for the Holy Land, I don't know where these come from, but somebody's pr printed a copy of these and stuck them up on the above our... Um, Picket stand there. So I've just uh, broken it up into daily paragraphs. God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for all who suffer in the Holy Land today. For your precious children, Israelis and Palestinians, traumatised and in fear for their lives. For the families of the bereaved, for those who have seen images they will never forget. For those anxiously waiting for news, despairing with each passing day. The Joint Public Issue Team Prayer. For Ukraine, God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. Tony Stoffick Dice's prayer diary for today. We ask God's blessing on Martin and Mike, our bishops, Archdeacon Rich and uh, Rural Dean Josh. We pray for Chris, who is Children and Families Minister in the Beckton with Wyverstone, Cotton and Old Newton, the Wickham Geth or Scaith uh, parishes. That suggests there is no lead minister there at the moment. We pray that they do find somebody to cover them, however that works out, whether they're looking for a house for duty half-time or full-time stipended or whatever it is they're looking for. Uh, strategic funded person, we pray that the right person for the job, you may know, provide that for them, we pray, and give them confidence and hope and uh, draw them onwards and upwards in your grace, love, mercy and provision. Pray for our permission to officiate clergy and readers, so those are they who are operating uh, in an unpaid capacity, rather than uh, stipendiary, self-supporting, uh, and or retired. They might have worked in a paid uh, role previous, and uh, we thank you for them and the contribution they make in our parish, parishes and across the diocese. Um, a note in our third column in relation to our uh, Twinned dioceses, the majority of Zimbabweans are suffering from the effects of hyperinflation, price increases and looming shortage of goods. We pray for a good agricultural season, for consistent life-giving and soul-nourishing rains to fall. That's a good example of how the economies are affected by lack of rain, not just the ability to grow and provide and eat food. We pray for Halesworth, closer to home for the people and businesses associated with the addresses within the Halesworth of Halesworth Road, Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Halton Road. Pay for people living those addresses for whom life isn't so good at the moment. We pray they will find the help they need, have the confidence and energy to seek the help that they require and for those that walk with them to do so. May they be helpful in assisting. Pray for people in those addresses for whom life is going well. May they turn to you with thanksgiving, be supportive and encouraging to those amongst whom they live. Pray for the businesses based in or serving those addresses. Also, they will thrive and prosper and continue to be able to provide good jobs and services to the town. We pray for Becky and Janet, Francis, Peter, Ron and Jean, Joan, Carol, Lynn, Linda, Liz, Jonathan, Veronica, Anna, Graham, Richard, Margaret, Kath, Vera, Ginny, Sheila, John, Laura, John, Moria, Felicity, Cynthia and others we may know for whom life is a challenge at the moment. Pray that breakthrough in sovereign grace bring them salvation, healing and deliverance. Pray that if it would be helpful to them, they will have a sure and certain experience of your presence in their circumstance. Pray for those that will with them be they volunteer, professional, neighbour, friends, and have the right word, the right action to say, do at the right time, to be a right royal, right proper help and assistance to those for whom you have prayed. We thank you for all the good and lives of Gillian, Billy, Bill, Kenneth, Pat, Rhoda, Eric, Adrian, Keith, Paul, Julie, Sally, 
Edward Jean. Just uh, picking up on another name that uh, we'll be given a funeral to see shortly. Can't see it once. But uh, we pray for them. And we pray for those who died suddenly and unprepared through sickness and violence, accident, those that have taken their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who are solely faithfully here. As we remember um, the chap we're remembering today, First Bishop of America, Samuel Seabury. Um, we pray that he might pray for us as we engage with where we are, uh, with our groundbreaking efforts to establish church, good governance, good oversight, um, effective communication, what it means and uh, what offers there are in God for those who do not believe in this place. May he pray for us. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, grant us them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn, the loss of loved one, or change in life chances, that you will be for us the way, the truth and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, O Mr. Rehmes, for us, for whom so good, Yabish, for Haba, the Adish Perim, Yadish, Messi, Rukun, Shahaba, Yanis, Aram Haspa, Holo, the Neve. Tay, Berry, Mabi, Arbas, Payas, Amabu, Haspa, Haba, your Roshna, Samakir, Yves, and Hosma, Hos, and Akalas. Chaprofus Mahoder, and Mushu, Salah, and the Rekamish, Messi, the other Labas, and Fosum, your Christian, Belly, Marianas. And Kayu Prama Yadish, Mahafas, Marogum, Aspahadash. Chapter <laughs> Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son Christ, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.